Greetings, dear friends, dear co-workers from around the world. We gather in the time of the new moon period in the cycle of Sagittarius. And thus we continue our group experiment in holding cyclic meditation, focusing on the common good. In this cycle, under the energy of Sagittarius and the mutable cross, we hold our focus on the theme of creating peace, introducing the measure of peace in all relations between humans and all the kingdoms. And specifically in this month, the topic for our meditation is through conflict to harmony. Peace as action. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Sasha. So we begin by aligning with our purpose in the project, which is on the next slide. And we have three aspects of our purpose. With our purpose, we aim to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet through this group meditation work that we're doing. And through this meditation, we're aiming to focus the power of our joint attention and intention for the common well-being of humanity and the well-being of Earth's overall planetary life. We're aiming to enable the recognition and manifestation of print spiritual principles in all fields of human life and activity. And we're aiming to magnetize thought forms of solution that support practical actions that lead to the advancement, the spiritual advancement the evolutionary advancement of humanity. And um, over the last bit more than a year, this purpose has been developing through the structure that has evolved. And Sasha's now going to talk to us about that structure a bit more. From the very beginning, it's been experiment how we can create the group space in virtual space, creating a, foc a focus, meditative focus th through which we as a group can invoke the vision of the plan and work with creating and strengthening thought forms that would support humanity in this amazing and challenging period of transition. And as we are now in the uh, energies of uh, Sagittarius, we reconnect with the purpose behind and we look how we can adjust our format that it would serve best to the purpose of the work which uh, selected. Starting this month, we uh, modifying slightly our format for our work, allowing, inviting us as a group 
to contribute more uh, into the process. Today we will hold uh, the open space, inviting all of us uh, for our impressions and that through the sharing of our ideas uh, or our, rather our impressions, we could create uh, that focused vision or precipitate the focused vision leading us to the meditation. There are three questions that Rebecca will uh, announce just in, in a minute that we invite us to reflect under the energies of such Sagittarius. And holding our open space, our sacred space, we will listen to what comes. Just uh, to remind us about that uh, this project is not just this meeting, but it's it's a long, a month long uh, uh, process. Uh, when we as a group uh, come together to identify the, choose the topic for the next month. And that happens uh, in a leap to a full moon in any particular month. And through open sharing, open conversation, we uh, seek for the seeds that uh, we would focus as a, as a topic. And the topic of each month is based on uh, themes for three crosses. And in the cross, uh, uh, in the mutable cross, as it is in this cycle, we work with the theme of peace, introducing the measure of peace into human relations. In the science of the fixed cross, we work with the theme of introducing the principle of sharing into economics and uh, all uh, fields of human activities. And in the science of the cardinal cross, we bring our focus to the theme of cleaning the house of politics and religion. And thus, through these three themes, we work with the thought forms that would help humanity prepare the way for the externalization of the hierarchy and the reappearance of the great teacher, Lord Maitreya. So the topic for our work in this month is through conflict to harmony, peace as action. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Alexander. So let's um, connect with our gratitude for each other in this work together and with our central heart as a group, our group heart, as we just take in these words of um, Douglas Gabriel, the student of Rudolf Steiner's work, who says that no matter what size the group, if conversation can ensue that is focused on higher thinking, then spiritual beings can come into the images and pictures being created by the words that are, in fact, beyond the spoken words. Group intent can focus consciousness to the point that it is pleasing to the spiritual world 
whereupon the spiritual world responds by inspiring people to say things that build up the conversation beyond what any one individual can achieve, even what the whole group can achieve. So let us invite the spiritual beings as we prepare for our work today. And let us take a few moments of silence as we seed the three meditation questions in our consciousness. So we have three questions. What is peace? What is peace? How can conflict help us find harmony? How can conflict help us find harmony? And what actions, both internal and external, can lead to peace? What actions can lead to peace. And as we hold and begin to ponder these questions in our group heart and in our group mental field. I'll hand over to Tracy who will lead us as we continue our alignment together through the naming circle. Over to you Tracy. Thank you, Rebecca. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts against distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle starting with our organizers and subjective group members. As your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of our group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. Alexander Ilchuk, calling in from Brooklyn, New York, United States. And uh, Katya Kaufman from the same place. Welcome. 
Rebecca. Rebecca Hood calling in from Mapleton on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia. Welcome. Brigitte. Birgitte Rasmussen calling in from Slavesa in Denmark. Welcome. Gillian. Hello, Gillian Douglas from the Norfolk coast in UK. Welcome. Aneta. This is Annette Lüffler calling in from Sorø in Denmark. Welcome. Antonella. This is Antonella. I'm calling from Brescia in North Italy. Welcome. Thank you. Avashi Sofia. Avasi Sofia from Athens, Greece. Welcome. Carlos. Carlos Bonacera from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Welcome. Danielle. You want to unmute yourself? Welcome, Danielle. Dina. Please unmute. Dina from Argentina, Tandil. Welcome. Dida. Hi, I'm Dida from Kirkehulinge in Denmark. Welcome. Thank you. Fred. Please unmute. Welcome, Fred. Frederick. Ah, yes, yes, Frederick. Uh, nice to meet you from Tokyo, Japan. Thank you. Welcome. Kiki. Kiki Bill from Washington, D.C., USA. Thank you. Welcome. Lynn. Hello from Lynn Green. Um, Columbus, Ohio, USA. Welcome, welcome. Martine. Martine Dupont, calling in from Chateau, Belgium. Welcome. Michelle. Hello, this is Michelle Adderby, calling in from Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. Welcome. Natalie. This is, this is Natalie from Nelson, New Zealand, Australasia. <coughs> Welcome. Risa. 
Luisa sent a message that she cannot unmute herself and she's welcoming us from Central and West California. Welcome, Lisa. Stacia. Hello. Hello. Oh, this is Stacia Hipkins calling in from Phoenix, Arizona, USA. Welcome. There's also Anne Crater. Uh, yes, this is Anne Crater from Riverton, New Jersey, USA. Welcome. And Aneta, Aneta Lafla. I believe I already called her, but we can call her again. I can say it again. Uh, this is Annette Lefler from Zoe in Denmark. Sorry. I... Welcome. It's okay. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I believe Go we ahead. have. No. Thank you. Sorry, Tracy. Oh, that's fine. Sometimes we have these little glitches in our <laughs> computer. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. At this time, let us now reconnect together as a group with our topic. Through conflict to harmony, peace as action. And let us ponder these three questions once again. First, what is peace? Next, how can conflict help us find harmony? And the third question posed is what actions, both within and without, can lead to peace?
So we hold the group silence. We invoke compressions. And whenever anyone is ready to share, please raise your hand and um, voice, project your voice into the group sent into the group card. Annette, please unmute yourself. Hello, this is Annette. I'm thinking fourth ray, secretaries. And I'm thinking peace is a temporary uh, balance after uh, evolution where um, the conflicts are creating a pause a peace until it necessarily have to go forward in evolution to another higher place of balance of peace. Thank you. Internet. Frederick? Yes. Uh, peace, as uh, we can remind the uh, United Nations and UNESCO, is not only uh, a lack of conflict or war, but it's also important in terms of uh, uh, spiritual and inner improvement of uh, the society and uh, our personal uh, as a citizen and also to uh, include, uh, for example, social justice, uh, any uh, equality, uh, nature, uh, right for the nature, right for animals, for any uh, soul on this, uh, in this world. Thank you. Thank you, Frederick. Natalie, please unmute yourself. And I, um, I think that peace comes from a higher place than just resolution of conflict. You've got to go deeper and bring your your energy higher or whatever it is higher i don't know what it is that you you bring but that's what it needs
peace is an unfolding process that is germinated within the seed of the heart and a, a longing that derives from a place of inquiry and contemplation and arises from a willingness and a place of courage to pierce the veils of illusion. Um, loving thoughts, random acts of kindness, looking for the similarities rather than the differences between men to see the unity leads to peace. Peace, uh, quietness in the heart and working from pure intent seems to bring peace. Thank you. It seems to me we're all speaking of soul consciousness um, for hopefully for all um, as the final result of our work, uh, a direction we can focus on um, of course, that involves a lot of uh, steps um, to reach that. Um, I see peace as a total confidence that everything is as it should be. Peace relates us as a group with uh, Shambhala energies, with the will aspect. We are working as souls looking from the child and trying to step down these energies. This fulcrum of energies at the center of the three crosses. In the center of the three crosses, there is a place of peace. Only love could relate and could transform this fulcrum in an organized creation. Peace is the establishment of right relationships with self and others and with all of nature and the planet. It is also the absence of war, but more than the absence of war, it is the presence of justice and truth. This is an edit, love, understanding, and forgiveness is leading to peace.
peace um, is a principle so the war is not a principle is the lacking of peace we have a, the spirit of peace so is a creative cosmic energy and uh, is we could wonder what is the difference between peace and harmony so the contrary the absence of harmony is disharmony um war is something something more than disharmony um so maybe yes as it was said is uh, on the plane of uh, right uh, relationships and is uh, on the activity aspect so when we are in harmony um we can create peace and uh, peace is also calm quietness so i guess that um i remind a principle um a theorem that says uh, there is no love without harmony nor harmony without love so love harmony and peace are a, a good triad to express the second main um, ray of love wisdom and i guess that probably peace has uh, is the wisdom of harmony oh it's just a um an idea so what actions can lead to peace i think is yeah only uh, people in harmony can create peace and uh, identification um with the all the uh, humanity we are the one humanity if we identify with this one body one reality but there is no place for separativeness, war, disharmony, because we are serving um, the us, the one uh, humanity. Thank you. It's Martin, it's made me think about the words of the New World uh, Server, that is uh, through self-forgetfulness, harmlessness, and right speech, we can arrive at peace and um, living um, cooperation and not competition. It's thinking of the conflict. How can conflict help us find harmony? through so many things everyone has just said, through disgust with injustice and greed and sadness at the selfishness and the greed and injustice. And it, it swells within one, these feelings of, of, of sadness. And it swells to such a point that you want to act, you realize that it has to be by something different, of course, and the opposite is through harmony, through love and peace. Thank you. As the conversation is developing, I um, feel very connected with um, the statement that was made right at the beginning um, about cycles of conflict that lead to temporary peace. And I feel this idea forming that um, we've, we've had this idea 
given to us in the teachings that peace is an outcome of conflict in a way. Um, and through conflict, we learn um, all of these abilities and skills that will enable us to enact peace. And I'm getting this sense of that those who can remain connected through throughout conflict um, can actually bring a living peace that um, exists within the conflict. Um, I'm thinking of Scorpio that precedes our Sagittarian sign and the tests and trials that take place there and the requirement for the disciple and that can be us as individuals or humanity as, as a whole to see the things that need to be conquered and clearly and with heart of peace and clarity to to conquer those things the injustice that that um, makes the feelings swell within us to the the um, mistakes that we make when we identify with our astral selves um, this conflict we can hold a, if we can hold a peace and clarity as we see those things those darknesses then um, we can live peace through conflict into harmony Frederick, you on? Sorry, apologies, Julian. Go ahead. Yes, uh, living in harmony. It's also uh, uh, living with forgiveness. Otherwise, we may keep conflict in our inner, or we uh, in our uh, karma, or uh, from life to other life. So, forgiveness is also part of peace. I think. Thank you. Julian, apologies for interrupting you before. No, it's okay, it's me. Um, I was just thinking in a state of conflict, if all participants in that state just stop and look at other people's point of view, sometimes that can help. Mariana, you are unmuted. Yes, uh, hello. Uh, it's, it's very interesting uh, to hear about conflict as a meaning of learning. I think conflict is a never-ending story because when we solve a conflict, there's a new conflict that appears harder than the one we left. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of the way uh, we we cross conflicts will teach us to be uh, 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 better souls um, so we must not be afraid of conflicts and um, we must be prepared to them prepared to difficulties prepared to different people prepare to to disagreements 
in order to um, try to find, um, as in the transdisciplinary research, we say an included middle in between two opposites, uh, in between A and B to find uh, C, a third term. And uh, uh, we only can do this in, in, if we meet the difference. Uh, if we are A with A, we always be speaking A, like love, harmony, and so on. And uh, so uh, I think we must be peaceful uh, when the conflict appears, and we must be prepared. Thank you. <laughs> Bernard, yes. Uh, peace uh, is a high vibration, and uh, when uh, we in silence uh, connect with this uh, high vibration, uh, I think uh, conflict uh, can be an outcome of this uh, peace vibration in uh, human uh, activities. And uh, then uh, conflict uh, becomes uh, helpful to go uh, further and uh, to uh, become more, uh, to uh, engage more uh, peace in uh, our uh, human activities. Thank you. Um, I'm much in agreement with, with people. Um, I think if we look at the word conflict and consider what we, that we're using that word, maybe um, if we could use a different word, uh, but it, we're talking about differences in perspective um, since we're all just um, personality wise, just on our own one and we're looking at differences in perspective and um, these differences allow us as uh, one of you said before to, to create something new if we can just communicate we're creating a new world through these differences if we could um, change the word conflict to something else i don't know what um, we could we could continue creating a world if we just had some rules for or some basic understandings about how we approach our differences, then we're free to create uh, a whole new, more spiritual world. Thank you. Ah, uh, yes, I think this. Uh, question of how can conflict help us find harmony is really an important one. And I wonder um, if all conflicts, I mean, if a conflict is resolved in a positive way, um, in a truly positive way through skilled um, conflict resolution, it does lead to harmony. Yet there are certain conflicts that come to mind right now that I wonder if they're ever going to be resolved in harmony, such as uh, the Palestinians and the Israelis, which has seemed to go on throughout my whole lifetime and beyond. Um, and then in the United States right now, uh, the Democrats and the Republicans. So, I mean, I think that um, it's, often very hard to resolve conflicts and there's such a thing in um, divorce terminology of irreconcilable differences and i hope that is not um something that is forever because i guess uh in the scheme of things all conflicts could be resolved harmoniously given the time and the and the skill to do it 
So that's all. I agree. Thank you. I think it requires extreme honesty. Someone mentioned honesty earlier um, about what our needs really are and who we really are, whether we're negotiating for a country or for our, ourselves or for whomever. Um, it requires real honesty to see what is really the important, the important need that's uh, in question. And working from there. Yes, and all those uh, qualities, they require a certain level of development, including the development of mind. Because in order to uh, choose the option, you need to see that option. You need to know of that. And it's interesting to me because we're now in Sagittarius, it is a point of unity, which is opposing, right? The line of uh, Gemini, Sag. So duality, which is in the, our matter, in the, our nature is duality. So there's conflict in there already which is given, as I'm my understanding, for the better understanding of both sides, because that's how we learn. Um, we understand only, mostly we understand something when it's opposing by something else and makes it clear. So the highest point is unity, which is really will to good. Because in order to reconcile that, one needs the level of maturity and the energy of will to, to do that. And um, I think as esoteric groups, what we can do, we can meditate and um, channel, like invoke that energy, at least the buddhic plane, to bring into those and like seriously meditate and supply those this energy, harmonizing energy towards those um, dramatic opposites, like, and, you know, Democrats, um, Republicans, Blacks, Whites, uh, color, non-color, men, women, uh, gender, non-gender. So it's, uh, it just needs a lot of higher um high energies in order to be able like you know you need the grease to make the thing work almost i don't know maybe it's a very like silly example but that's how i feel and also i think very interesting about that point like creating a b and c uh when we were working with um in russian groups they we have you know um a fourth point which is a d because normally between a and b the, the point c kind of half like half to you half to me nobody wins but again that's not in the nature so in order to really step from the up from the conflict and do that creation of something new we need to shift the level and find that point D, which allows A and B be viewed as non-opposing and just be two sides of one. And in practical life, it's sometimes really hard to do because some things are really drastically, dramatically opposing. And I asked myself at some point, so yes, I would like to love. I would like life to be my vibration. So how do I love something really uh, disgusting to me? And then, you know, it just, I had to in internalize, and it took me, I think, 40 years of my life to internalize the simple thing, which is to love and to agree is not the same thing. But 
to not agree and not allow to exist is also a very different thing. So forgiveness and the next level, high level, the principle of acceptance, because everything is. And we do figure out things through conflict, but we are learning. It's just the war is that, that level of learning which is a completely on a physical plane destruction when that energy of will is basically is taken out of people's life. People need to like give their lives in order to shift some cause. So in order for them, for people not to give their lives, is a cherry groups can precipitate that energy and solve like solve things on the mental plane, at least on the mental plane so we can see before we do like blueprints before we build do we need it or not and there's another solution thank you yes uh, yeah and i would add also this that um when we uh say that the full phrase harmony through conflict is not said that conflict is what can create harmony is just a through is just a temporary lack of harmony is just the way uh, that the human kingdom uses to step up to the number two which is love wisdom so it's not conflict which can create harmony is just the mm, condition karmic condition the conflict that uh, wakes up consciousness to desire or to will to want uh, the harmony back so it's i think it's important this is just like it's not duality that creates unity but duality is a temporary lacking of unity it's just a condition of the manvantara of creation of the manifestation that um um, gives the, the field of experience for the evolution of consciousness to come back to unity. So unity, harmony, peace are the principles, the active principle, principles which can create, but not conflict, not duality, not separativeness. That those are just uh, names that uh, our mind um, created as the lack of a principle. So just um, in a way to think of uh, uh, war not war cannot create peace. <laughs> Duality cannot create unity. Separativeness cannot create uh, union. So I would um, change the question uh, paradoxically and saying it's not conflict that can create harmony but through conflict through the experience of conflict conflict the human um, personality uh, desires the the level uh, the superior level of the soul uh, and desires unity again as it was before uh, the separation of incarnation thank you uh, between uh, conflict and uh, peace uh, we may have uh, awareness awareness to understand and to learn from uh, our soul duty in terms of conflict and to understand uh, early conflict issue so to and to understand also um, uh, the limit uh, of uh, uh, human behavior for example uh, in terms of ethics in terms of uh, social relationship in terms of uh, uh, freedom in terms of uh, uh, friendship and so on so it's a way to to learn uh, from for the soul duty and for uh, our awareness and the awareness uh, of course is part of our uh, uh, current life 
etheric uh, plane and astral plane for the for the next uh, life so that it's part of uh, energy thank you Was a comment from Risa uh, who mm, has problem with microphone to unmute herself. I will just read what she wrote, uh, and then we'll repost that everyone could read. Um, the Tibetan write how peace is created. It's an alchemical process. From intentions for the will to good emerges goodwill in the hearts and minds of humanity, which creates right human relations which then creates the vital and ongoing process of peace. I think the real beginning questions is how to create peace. The creation of peace creates the definition of itself. Thank you, Risa. If we look at peace, or if we observe peace in terms of energy, it's kind of special wave. So the wave, for example, we are able to broadcast when we do some meditation uh, locally uh, uh, with our neighbor, with our uh, uh, in a building, for example, and so on. And but also from the collective intelligence and collective soul. So that's also part of uh, um, the fusion of energy and the fusion of peace. I mean, like seed. Each time we have some seed of peace and the, those seeds merge and make a fusion of awareness and collective awareness. Thank you. I think with uh, our population as large as it is right now, with uh, 7 billion souls living on this planet in the physical realm, we're looking at each individual cell that creates humanity on the physical plane, and also that which impresses uh, that those that are in the non-physical. And um, you know, peace is something that has to come from within before it can be seen without or in the outer world as a whole, true peace and constant, uh, something that will last and remain. So if the peace is not found from within each individual cell at some point, um, you know, the peace in the outer world, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna see the little conflicts come up even more so in, in that type of thing. And I think it's, I think what it might be trying to teach us at this point, because we're, we're at that point of, um, of evolving again, going up the spiral. Uh, you know, we can't, part of what we're looking at is the duality and the Maya. And when we as a human race start to establish new values in the physical world, I think it's the values that we need to uh, address in the physical world. You know, what is important in life? You know, we always talk about finance and money. And if you have money, you have money does not always bring happiness. You know, health is important. Um, and some things that are important to certain people aren't important to others. So I think values, we need to go back to basic values, you know, morals and, and, and place higher value on those with good morals and, and valor and those that try to help, you know, help the whole. So um, that also will help, maybe help create peace in the outer world. But 
really enjoyed the discussion about um, the dimension of uh, of being the non-duality to the unity or you know the unified field or whatever and i think at this point in time we're looking because of science helping us and everything too with the quantum worlds coming out so that more of the population is aware you know we we can move into from the third dimension to maybe the fifth dimension or or and higher um because there isn't just like what was saying a plus b equals c there's that third you know that fourth component and fifth and sixth and seventh components that we haven't even looked at we're so busy looking at one spot that we haven't looked up or across or down you know so i think that's a real important thing that probably we could do as um you know through esoteric our esoteric practices is in our own daily lives don't just look at the yes and no and up and down and black and white and but leave it open to possibilities and that brings in the hope and um which is what's desperately needed right now in the world thank you something which is also important as following what was said is education that means respect uh, we see in many, uh, in our daily life, uh, in some countries, as a fact, lost of respect, lost of uh, ownership that uh, if it doesn't belong to you, you don't, uh, you don't uh, touch, for example. In some countries, you can leave, for example, Japan. You can, okay. if you get a bag somewhere, maybe no one will touch, you will find your bag. Uh, several hours later at the same place or at the lost and found, but it will be there. So respect is important. And uh, But the problem uh, for peace, that's part of, of, yes, of the learning process and the soul process for the young generation. The issue is um, uh, the lack or um, the, the loss of education. That means the, uh, in the past, education or the school purpose was uh, part of this respect education and ethics. But uh, school is losing this kind of uh, part of uh, transdisciplinary education and topics. That's part one. That's one thing. The other thing is also uh, how we we are in peace in ourselves because the peace starts in our body, because our body is a kind of ecosystem uh, with multiple uh, dimension, uh, with different uh, aspect and different energy. So peace also should be part of ourselves through different means and, and uh, exercise, for example, we'll talk maybe later about that. Thank you. It it seems it's harmony through harmony that is going to get us through the conflict, in fact, I guess, is how I see it. Thank you. I would like to make a request before we before we uh, finish up. If I might be allowed to do just a short meditation at the end before we, we close, it's about two minutes. If I could read that, I think it would be uh, something that would be appreciated by people. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn, of course. And thank you for reminding us about the time in the group space like this time bends and has own uh, dynamic Katya raises hands right here yeah i can raise my hand you know but i can raise my hand to to alexander um i just wanted just to um try to answer the question is like if this the piece is a principle Thank you, Antonella, for reminding. How do we 
identify with that principle? How do we precipitate that principle in our lives? And uh, this underlying unity and oneness, which is like monadic as I understand level. So because monadic level is, 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 is oneness, being, right? And there are the personalities incarnated and completely uh, in the process of learning and uh, acquiring and they 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 just it's it's not that easy to um for the personality there's a soul consciousness which is mediation principle right the middle principle but how do we see all of that going back to monadic level although we cannot operate on that level but still how can we keep it in mind that it exists that unity is that that peace is a principle mm -hmm. And so I suggest we uh, move closer to meditation. There are two more raised hands. So let's please uh, have Mariana and Frederic, and then I will ask Rebecca take us into meditation. Synthesize, trying to synthesize this richness of all the sharings that's been put in the group chalice. Uh, please, Mariana. Well, uh, in between A and B, <laughs> there is a field of possibilities and we meet there. Uh, it's uh, Rumi Fault from the poet Rumi. I think mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, we have to um, um, depasse, go further the binary mind. That was uh, very important today. The way we can go through uh, is maybe uh, our next <laughs> meeting because th there were there was a lot of uh, potentiality uh, said, but uh, concretely, how can we do this um, in between A and B and uh, and uh, create this field of possibilities in our everyday lives? Um, not easy task. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, just uh, an idea of action can lead to uh, peace. Uh, uh, mirroring can be an interesting approach because mirroring, each one can uh, see himself or herself uh, against a mirror. So it's a way to uh, be able to uh, see or to uh, become aware of conflict, of conflict with uh, ourselves conflict uh, with our family, conflict with uh, neighbor, conflict with whatever that means. Then you have uh, uh, a collective conflict, now, nation conflict, for example, which is more uh, broad and so this. So mirroring is one thing. And in Japan, there is the um, so-called ADO energy. So when you generate energy, positive energy, then you share this energy and energy help everyone to, yeah, to to become aware of conflict, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Frederick, and thanks everyone. And Rebecca, please take us in a meditation. Be preparing to today's meeting, we were in the focalizing triangle, trying to see how uh, modify this format to uh, lead meditation. Previously, people who um, prepare their thoughts, they would contribute their seed thought into the group chalice for the meditation. Naturally, with today's format, it would be difficult that everyone would contribute. And so today we will experiment with one person trying to synthesize the richness of all impressions into seed or seeds in the uh, meditation but let's see how this experiment unfolds further maybe in next meetings we will try something a little bit different but today rebecca takes this herculean task leading us into synthesizing meditation and what about lean's meditation and then uh, lean your suggested meditation would be okay for the uh, closing well, yes perhaps. that would be okay you feel good for the closing? 
whichever way is fine with me. Rebecca, I would uh, invite you to decide what is the best way. Lynn first and I, then or vice versa. I, I am wondering if Lynn, you would lead us at, at first and then I can draw things together after that. Would that be okay? That would be wonderful, thank you. Okay, the floor is yours. In the beginning, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now is the time of a new beginning. I am a co-creator with God, and it is a new heaven that comes. As the good will of God is expressed on earth through me, it is the kingdom of light, love, peace, and understanding and I am doing my part to reveal its reality. I begin with me. I am a living soul, and the Spirit of God dwells in me as me. I and the Father are one, and all that the Father has is mine. In truth, I am the Christ of God. What is true for me is true of everyone, for God is all, and all is God. I see only the spirit of God in every soul. And to every man, woman, and child on earth, I say, I love you, for you are me. You are my holy self. I now open my heart and let the pure essence of unconditional love pour out. I see it as a golden light radiating from the center of my being. And I feel its divine vibration in and through me above and below me. I am one with the light. I am filled with the light. I am illumined by the light. I am the light of the world. With purpose of mind, I send forth the light. I let the radiance go before me to join the other lights. I know this is happening all over the world at this moment. I see the merging lights. There is now one light. We are the light of the world. The one light of love, peace, and understanding is moving. <clears throat> it flows across the face of the earth, touching and illuminating every soul in the shadow of the illusion. And where there was darkness, there is now the light of reality. And the radiance grows, permeating, saturating every form of life. There is only the vibration of one perfect life now. All the kingdoms of the earth respond and the planet is alive with light and love. There is total oneness and in this oneness, we speak the word. Let the sense of separation be dissolved. Let mankind be returned to God kind. Let peace come forth in every mind. Let love flow forth from every heart. Let forgiveness reign in every soul. Let understanding be the common bond. And now from the light of the world, the one presence and power of the universe responds. The activity of God is healing and harmonizing planet Earth. Omnipotence is made manifest. We are seeing the salvation of the planet before our very eyes. As all false beliefs and error patterns are dissolved, the sense of separation is no more. The healing has taken place and the world is restored to sanity. This is the beginning of peace on earth and goodwill toward all as love flows forth from every heart, forgiveness reigns in every soul and all hearts and minds are one in perfect understanding. It is done and it is so. Thank you, Lynn. Mm -hmm. 
And as we connect with that picture of completed peace, achieved peace, let us expand the container of our consciousness to include some of the many threads that have been touched today in our conversation. The threads that will help us towards that picture of peace manifested. Help us towards the practicality and the reality of that peace manifested. So let's align with the sign of Sagittarius. The arrow that cleaves between duality to create oneness. Where separate selfish personal ambition becomes aspiration and higher direction. where the man becomes the controller of the horse and where personality gives way to soul control. And we connect and align with the opportunity of Sagittarius to rise above the marshes of the mind and emotions into the clear air where the true goal can be seen. And we by virtue of our true imaginations, bring ourselves into the place of Buddhic light and love. Seeing all that we've discussed from this high level, this high plane, And from this viewpoint, just take a moment in your mind to connect with some of the threads of the conversation that have made an impression for you. Ideas about conflict and harmony. The cyclic nature of conflict and harmony. The idea of peace as a principle. And the expressed desire to precipitate this principle somehow, to find our way
the field of possibilities between A and B. And the higher consciousness that exists beyond C. The qualities needed to bring peace. Honesty. Will. Will to good. Quietness in the heart, working from pure intent. Understanding, forgiveness, love. Self-forgetfulness, harmlessness, right speech. Feelings that swell within us as we perceive injustice and greed. And our choices open to us in how we respond to those feelings. The pairs of opposites and the growth of understanding through contrast and opposition. Awareness of our karmic condition. that wakes up our desire to bring about harmony. The will to rise high to stand in this buddhic place and from here to confront ourselves and our conflicts with dispassion, with equanimity with clear vision
and to bring this energy down into the swamp, down into the marshes, to enlighten. to balance, to unify. And as we connect again with the energies that Sagittarius brings us, we align with the sense qualities of the mission and purpose of humanity. And we humbly invoke the power to see that vision that goal and to direct our course towards it. And to help to direct humanity's course towards it. And let us see this high aspiration, this purified aspiration, this soul connected, soul directed aspiration, flowing on freely from us, from our group gathered today and all those beings who have been magnetized to our work. Through them, through us, through our group heart, which is more than us. Flowing freely, the energies that we have magnetized flowing out to be available to all of humanity, to touch all hearts and minds that are open to these qualities of thought and aspiration. As we invoke from the point of light within the mind of God. Let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May Christ return to earth.
from the center where the will of God is known. Let purpose guide all little human wills. The purpose which the masters know and serve. And from the center which we call the human race. Let the plan of love and light work out. And may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh.